Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BB3D channel we're going to be taking a look at this cool little Bluetooth connected laser engraver from Comgro. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So, welcome to the garage at the BB3D channel. Now, since we're doing laser stuff and this needs to happen in a well-ventilated area, this is the wellest ventilatedest area in the house. I mean, sure, it's cold and it's humid from the rain, but at least the acoustics suck. But enough about the venue. We're here to play with a laser. And the one we're going to play with is Comgro's mini Bluetooth connected laser cutter and engraver. It can engrave on a variety of materials and in fact, Comgro gives you a nice selection of things to try it on. There are a few wood squares, some wood cubes, some colored paper squares, and some colored felt, and even some metal dog tags. It also comes with a metal base plate with a grid marked on it, so you can position your materials within the laser's operating area, a power adapter, and the all-important laser safety goggles. Now, a couple of quick notes about this laser. One, putting it together is simply a matter of snapping on the two sides, which are made out of the same green plastic as the laser safety goggles, and then removing the sticker that covers the laser's output thing. And two, controlling it is simply a matter of installing an app on your phone or tablet and pairing it up via Bluetooth. Now the easiest way to find the app, at least on an iOS device, is to search the app store for Mini Laser Engraving Machine, and the one you want is called, coincidentally, Mini Laser Engraving Machine. After it's installed, however, its name is Blue Laser, so locate that and remember where it ended up so you can get into the app a little bit later. So now that the app is installed, let's get the laser set up. First, place the grid plate on your work surface. The grid plate not only shows you where the laser can reach, that is the area within the grid, it also serves as a shield so the laser doesn't damage your work surface. And the grid plate is designed so that it fits perfectly underneath the legs of the unit, so you can put the grid plate down, put the thing that you want to engrave on the grid, and then set the unit on top of it. The arrow on the grid plate and the arrow on the top of the unit need to point in the same direction. It's kind of a this way up indicator pointing to where the top of the print area is. So when the grid plate is in place, if you have the arrows on the top cover and the grid plate pointing away from you, the grid will be close to you. Now I want to engrave on this piece of wood from the kit. So I'm going to put that down here on the grid and it might be a good idea to tape the corners of it down onto the grid to keep it attached to the grid plate. I've got a little bit of blue tape right here. There. I'm not planning on lasering all the way into the corners, so a little bit of tape here and there is probably okay. And that'll keep the workpiece from moving if I accidentally bump the table or something. Okay, safety first. As soon as you plug the power adapter into the laser, it's going to start emitting a laser beam. So before you plug in the power adapter, you should don your laser safety goggles. And you should also make sure that the area is clear of other people or pets. If anyone's in the area and they want to watch, make sure that they are wearing laser safety goggles as well. Also, be aware that laser engraving and laser cutting work by firing a laser beam at a workpiece and burning it. For engraving it, it only burns a little. For cutting, it burns a lot. But in both instances, it's burning, and where there's burning, there's smoke. That's why I'm in the garage. Laser engraving and cutting should be done in a well-ventilated area. Also, some things can release some pretty horrible smells when they burn, so keep that in mind if you decide to engrave on leather. Okay, we've got a workpiece on the grid plate and the software installed on the phone. And nobody else is in the garage. We've got our laser goggles on, so let's give this thing some power. Okay, so as soon as I plug it in, the red power indicator on top lights up, and down on the business side of things, you can see there's a laser dot shining down on the workpiece. Included with this kit is a little matte black strip of something, plastic most likely, that you can use as a focusing target for the laser. There's a ring on the laser emitter that you can turn to adjust the focus so you can get the tiniest possible laser dot. Now it seems to be set pretty well 
for the workpiece that we've got in here, but if you were trying to engrave on a thicker workpiece, like maybe a wallet or something, you would probably have to adjust the focus. Next thing on your phone or tablet, open the Blue Laser app and pair it via Bluetooth with the Convo Laser. To pair the app and the laser, tap the gear icon at the top left and then tap connect the device. Within a second or two, a blue laser device should be shown, so you can tap that to pair with it. And once it's paired, the green link indicator on the top of the unit lights up so you can tell that your phone or tablet is able to talk to it. Now there are a number of ready-made images available in the app and you can get to them by tapping the material library icon. Some of these are intended for etching and some of these are intended for cutting. The first dozen or so are good for etching. The other ones that are like plant and animal silhouettes with notches in them, these are better for cutting. In this video though, we're just going to etch things, so I'm just going to pick this little cat. Now you can pinch to zoom out or zoom in and you can drag it around to position it on the workpiece. So I'll scale it down a little bit and move it down to the lower right corner of the workpiece. Then I can tap next and the laser is going to make all kinds of buzzing noises as it homes itself and gets ready. Now at the top of the screen it says carving mode and what it means by that is engraving. I'll make sure the material selected is wood. In this case the closest thing is hardwood. Then there are settings for power and speed. I'll turn the power down a little bit to 70%. And I'll leave the speed at 100%. Then I'll tap Preserve, which in this app means Save. Then the settings get saved, and at the bottom I can tap Start Carving, and then we can get this etched. Now the laser starts scanning back and forth across the area that it's etching, and it burns the little cat into the workpiece. Now, right now, this smells like a cross between a campfire and some hippie incense. I think I need to dial the power back a little bit because this is starting to look like charcoal. To pause the engraving process, I'm going to tap Suspension of Carving. Then I'll tap Config to adjust the laser's power output. And I'm going to set it to about 40%, which is about half of what it was. Then I'll tap Preserve to save that setting. And the app asks if I want to start again or continue carving. And I'm going to tap continue. Now it's engraving at 40% power instead of 70% power. Now there's also a little progress bar at the bottom of the app just above the pause and stop buttons, or the suspension and long-term termination buttons. Now this should be done in a moment or two, and we'll see how that 40% power setting looks versus the 70%. Now one of the things to know about this software is that it's pretty easy to use, but there's literally no documentation on it at all. So without a manual or any sort of guidance, you're left to experiment on your own to see what power settings work best for the material that you're etching. Okay, it's done. Now for safety, I'm going to remove power from the unit and then I can move it off of the grid. And I can also take off the goggles. Okay, the 70% looks really dark, and you can see there's some darkening around the image from the smoke it was producing. The 40% looks a lot better. I think I'll stick with that for this particular material. Now, in addition to laser engraving these preset images, you can also take a photo with the shoot feature and engrave it. Or you could select a photo from your photo album and use that. You can use the writing board feature to place text onto the work area for engraving, and you can create your own QR code or barcode to engrave onto something. So I'll flip the workpiece over and tape it down again, and I'll put the laser back on the grid plate, and then we can engrave a photo. Okay, workpiece is flipped, laser safety goggles are on, and power is now applied. So if you're already in the app and you unplug the unit and you plug it back in, the app knows that you've disconnected via Bluetooth, but it brings up a nice little connect Bluetooth button so we can tap that. It scans quickly to find the Bluetooth laser. We select the laser, and then we're back in business. So from my photo album, I have selected an ancient meme. Now, right away, I can see that this is wanting to do one bit black and white engraving. So anything darker than a particular threshold value is black, and anything lighter than that is white. 
but there's a grayscale button at the bottom right and I'll tap that. And that looks a lot better. Hopefully it engraves nicely. I'll tap next and the app will send the image data over to the laser. Now this will take a minute or two because it's got a lot of information to send. So again, we're engraving on the hardwood at 40% power and 100% speed. I'll tap preserve to save the settings and then I'll tap start carving. And the laser starts to do its thing. And that thing that it does still smells like campfires and incense. Okay, so this is done. And the result is not as good as I had hoped it would be. I mean, the text came out fine, but the app was giving me a subtle hint when it wanted to do this as pure black and white instead of grayscale. So it looks like if I want to engrave photos, I'm going to need to adjust the contrast a little bit and maybe continue experimenting with the power settings. But you know what? For an out-of-the-box experience where you can unbox a laser engraver, download an app, and within like 5 or 10 minutes be engraving an image onto something, that's actually pretty cool. The price on this right now is $139 on Comgrow's site, and there's a link in the description that'll take you right to it. Now, if you wanted to be cute or funny, you could probably engrave something onto a piece of bread and then toast it for an edible message. I mean, who wouldn't love to propose a toast to a happy new year? Okay, now we're almost at the end, but I wanted to reiterate some safety warnings. One, I guess I don't need these on right now. Wear the laser goggles whenever this thing is plugged in because when it's powered up, it's doing laser things. Now, don't leave the laser engraver running unattended either. The engraver also functions as a laser cutter, even though we didn't go into the cutting feature on this video. Now, often the workpiece is something flammable, like wood or fabric or something, so you want to be on hand in case something goes wrong and your workpiece actually bursts into flames. Use this only in a well-ventilated area. Engraving onto wood isn't that bad of a smell, but I would imagine that plastics or leather could get pretty gnarly. Unplug the engraver when it's not in use. It only takes a few seconds after powering it up to pair it with the app, so there's no reason to leave it plugged in if it's going to be more than a few minutes between your engraving jobs. Don't try to engrave onto shiny things with mirror-like finishes. What do shiny mirror-like things do? They reflect light. If you try that, you're asking for trouble by reflecting a laser beam around the room. So seriously, don't do that. And finally, when this thing is plugged in and running and it's engraving or cutting, please, please don't reach in where the laser beam is. That will simply result in pain and tears and curse words and probably a pretty bad smell. Okay, so that's Comgrow's little laser engraver. Now, as someone who's never used a laser engraver before, I think it's pretty neat. And so long as you have an area you can use it safely, it should be a lot of fun. You can make coasters or personalized gifts or maybe even personalized toast. I may have to try that. Thanks to Comgrow for sending this unit to me so I can play around with it a little bit and show it off. Now, in addition to this engraver, Comgrow also sells new and refurbished Creality 3D printers with a one-year warranty. So if you're looking to save a buck or two on a 3D printer, there's a link to their new and refurb printer sections in the description too. And if you have any questions about this engraver, leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer it. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we've got for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go engrave something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end. And thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you like this episode, a thumbs up would be great, and if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. Oh, well, and I've got some other videos here that you might want to take a look at, too. And if nothing else, please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. Subscribing is absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.